Hello and welcome to Trend Maker or TR3ND Maker. My name is Alex and today we're going to do a full on review of this Hatchbox Thermobox 3D filament storage box and that is coming up right now. All right, so let's get to that unboxing and assembly. All right, we have the literature and instructions in here. I've already reviewed those. And we actually have the box here. Now this is actually just has a little, you turn it and it will just sort of pop off, a clear shield. We have like a little cover plate here that does have the thermohydrometer here. So I'll go ahead and just take that out, put that aside. We have the packs of desiccant. So inside here, we actually have some vacuum sealed packets with three packs of desiccant in each. All right, and we have the little um, insert here, which includes an extra battery for the thermohydrometer. And we also have two PTFE tubes um, for the spooling feature. So this will have one for 1.75 millimeter and one for three millimeter right here and then to load the desiccant there's these actually these little uh, cover plates here that just sort of pop out and there's actually six compartments sort of pop those out and then one pack of desiccant will go into each of these slots so just put one in and then the cover shield goes back over top and they just sort of pop in pretty easily no tools required all right, so that's it, that's all set. And then we have the actual thermohydrometer and that has two little holes in the back and you just sort of pop those on the holes here so it mounts there nice and straight. And then basically you would load in your filament like so. And if you want to use the spooling feature, you'll just pop the little rubber tab here on the corner like so and you'll place in your PTF E-tube. In this case, I'll use the 1.75 millimeter and then you can basically just take your spool and run it inside there. But I'll just throw this in here to make it quick. And then your cover plate goes back on. And there it is. Okay, so that's basically it. That's a fully assembled Hatchbox Thermobox 3D filament storage box. I really want to push this thermal box to the limit here. So I've sort of created a little experiment here. Now to set this up, I live in the Washington DC metro area, sort of known as a moderate climate. Typical humidity here is around 45, 55%, sort of varies in there. However, we've had about three days of heavy rain and the moisture and the relative humidity in this room right now is 61%, which is actually pretty high. So it's actually a relatively moist environment. Now I have uh, probably 35, 40 rolls of open filament. Most of them I sort of keep in bags, um, but I do have quite a few rolls that are just left out, sometimes sitting on the floor, sometimes on a machine. Um, and moisture in filament is a really rare occurrence for me. It does happen once in a while, but not really a big deal. And I can usually print slower and change my temperatures and sort of work through it. However, I really wanted to push this box. So I've sort of created this little biodome experiment here. So what I have is a Tupperware box. There's an inch of water sitting in the bottom, a couple empty spool holders to sort of elevate things off the water. I've got a roll of PETG, PLA, and a couple meters of TPU. And I've got the thermo box in here. And I also have another one of these meters inside the box. So right now, this has been in here about an hour or two. And let me just say that the thermo box, when I first put, enclosed the, the roll in there, I was reading about 58, 59% relative humidity when I closed it off. And every five or 10 minutes, it's sort of clicking down. Right now, it's sitting at 38% inside this sort of bio chamber here. And in this box right now, 92% relative humidity after a few hours sitting inside here. And that seems to be going up. So what I'm gonna do is wait 72 hours or three days, and we're gonna come back and check on this. We're gonna try to print with this filament. I'm gonna try to show you what wet filament looks like so you'll know it if you, you experience it. And we're gonna also see how this thermo box is doing in keeping this filament dry, especially in a really moist environment. All right, it's been 72 hours. Let's check and see how this thermobox is doing in this super moist environment. All right, so looking in here, I can see that the thermohydrometer in the chamber is actually at 99%. And 
the thermo box is actually reading 25%. So even though it's been in this really moist environment, that number has slowly been clicking down over the last three days. I tell you what, let's pull all the filament out and let's sort of go over and look at this wet filament and maybe things that you can look for to know if maybe wet filament is an issue for you. All right, I just want to take a moment to sort of go over uh, what moisture in your filament may look like and some of the early signs of it. Okay, so first of all, uh, this yellow filament was actually in the chamber for three days, and upon getting ready to unravel it, to print with it, it just sheared, this, this little uh, end just sheared off of the little catch here. And that's a sign. It sort of seemed like it was brittle, and a lot of people might think it's actually dry, but actually that's the moisture in the filament. The uh, actual molecules inside this filament um, have little air pockets in between the molecules. And when their air can compress, so as we bend the filament, the air can compress and we can get these arcs bending the filament. However, if we get moisture in there, those air pockets are now filled with water or liquid. And when we try to bend it, they can't compress and they tend to snap. And it sort of gives the reaction that it seems like it's dry or brittle, but actually that is moisture in the filament. And it's an early sign. Um, here I can see that this spool right here, get this nice and close, I bet you if I just pull this, I can see that it's, it's sort of already broken. But as I come on undo, the, undo this, see, that piece actually just broke off. All right, that's a sign, uh, early indicator. This was a spool that I just had sitting out. It's been out for probably like six months, just sitting in the air. You can see it's an almost dead roll. Um, and then see here, same thing. Um, I can see that the way this is bent over, um, that this is probably, this will probably break if I just give a little pull. Yeah, see, it just, it just broke right off. That's a sign that there's some moisture in this filament. This is the one that was in there, and you can see the sticker has all, like, the moisture has just sort of pulled up the sticker on here, too, which is kind of crazy. Okay, um, but inside the chamber here, we're still looking at 24% uh, humidity, so I have a feeling this is pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to print with this roll of PLA and that PET-G and see if we can replicate... Um, some of the signs uh, when you're printing of what to look for. And generally speaking, here's a couple things to look out for. If under your normal settings you had smooth prints and all of a sudden you're getting sort of almost like a fuzzy, t a fuzzy texture, that's a sign that you might have uh, moisture in your filament. If you're also noticing uh, when, it's, when it's actually printing and you listen very carefully, you hear like a sound of like really finely sizzling bacon, just a little that's a sign. That's actually the, the uh, water vapors uh, sort of a boiling as its filaments coming out. That could be a sign that you're having um, moisture in your filament. Also, you may start getting a little bit more stringing than normal again. And that's just because the, the uh, extruder is actually going to start sputtering a little bit as it's coming out of the nozzle. Okay, so let's go ahead and print with this and let's see if I can replicate uh, what, what good filament versus sort of moist filament looks like. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, the wet filament versus the dry filament. Okay, so to start off with, I put the wet PLA in the printer, went ahead and printed it. I did notice that that first layer seemed a little rougher than normal. Usually it prints smooth as glass. Definitely look a little fuzzy, a little textury. Um, but after a few layers, it seemed to clean itself up, and actually the, the walls, perimeter seemed like they were doing pretty good. And you can see that it was looking pretty good. And I did notice a little bit of wisping of stringing uh, periodically. Nothing major, but just a little bit of just wisps here and there. And as I got up maybe about a half inch, um, I noticed more stringing, more stringing, more stringing, and then it actually clogged and failed. And you can see that right here. And I didn't notice this until I pulled it off, but actually on the back side of the uh, filament here, where the seam is, let me get that in the camera. There was getting this, this really roughness, that sort of uh, textured look, uh, feeling, that fuzzy skin look right there. And I don't know if it's the speeding up or the slowing down, but that was causing an issue. So I thought, well, then maybe it's my settings. Let me just double check my settings. I put the dry filament in, and you know what? That one printed very nicely uh, with no real issues at all. So went back and printed with the yellow again. That was the wet one. And I noticed that still right there, that one spot there. I'm trying to get that in the camera. There. So you can see right there on that, that seam right there, it definitely messed up with an artifact and I don't have that with the dry filament. So definitely the wet filament um, is a slightly affecting this. Um, maybe I could slow it down, do a couple things to fix that. I don't know. Okay, now as for the PET-G. So I, that roll of PET-G that I actually put in the moisture chamber there, um, I had sitting out for like six months, no bag, nothing. Uh, so I thought it was already pretty wet. Put it in there for three days. I thought it was going to be done. But you know what? Actually, that PET-G printed absolutely perfectly. Look at that. Just 
no issues whatsoever. So that printed really well. So uh, that was the Hatchbox Pet G, and maybe it's not as hydroscopic as maybe I thought. Okay, so then we got to the TPU. Now, TPU is notorious for being uh, hydroscopic, and I thought, let's go ahead and print with that. So I put in the wet filament, and it was just, uh, the first layer going down, it was it seemed like the skirt was okay, and then it just, it just failed. It was all textured. It was all uh, messed up. It kept clogging worked through it. I had to do it like four or five times. I could get it to go a little bit, but basically it just failed, and I just got frustrated um, after five or six attempts. Completely failed. And then I thought, let me go just and see what's going on with the filament, and I put up a micrometer to it, and you could see that that one point, normal 1.73, 1.74 uh, millimeter filament was actually now 1.81. So that's probably where I was getting the failure. Went in, cleared the clog, which is pretty easy on that printer, thank goodness. And I put in uh, the drive TPU, and you know what? Same settings, same everything. And you can see that that just came out absolutely gorgeous. So, uh, yeah, definitely the wet filament, uh, it can cause an issue. Now is the time I'm going to sort of give you my opinion on whether I think this Hatchbox Thermobox 3D filament storage box is something you should buy or maybe you should pass on. Okay, to start off with, the storage box here is doing exactly as it's supposed to do. It's keeping the moisture from getting to the filament. And even in that extremely moisture-rich environment we created in the Tupperware bin with 99% humidity, the, the measured reading inside the actual storage box was 38% humidity, which is extremely low. In fact, the room here is now about 60% humidity. So definitely much lower than a room, and I feel like it would store the filament for a very long time and do very well. And probably over time, it may click down. In fact, right now, this has just been sitting out here, and it's still coming down. It was 22% a couple hours ago, and now it's 21 so over the couple days, it's been slowly, slowly dropping even more. So I feel like as a storage box, this product is doing exactly as it's supposed to. Now, I do have a couple issues with it, and the primary one is that you have this feed tube here, which implies that you can feed your filament from it. Problem is, because there's no sort of spool holder in the center, there's a lot of friction down here. It's just sort of dragging, and it feels like it's more yanking the filament out of the spool holder. And I've tried these half rolls and I've tried the full rolls and it just doesn't seem to slide very nicely and it more sort of drags across the table. Um, so I don't think it's working really well. And I tried different positions and turning it in different places. And you know, you can put it over here like this, but it's sort of not mounted. So it sort of drags along. It's just not really great as a feeding device in any way whatsoever. Um, but it does really good job of keeping the humidity down inside the box. Okay, the other issue I have with it is the price. Now, the list price on this product is $55. And let me just say that I've purchased everything here for this review with my own money. This was my money I spent to just do this review for you. So this was $55. However, they did have a 30% coupon uh, because it was a new product coming out and I had to sort of wait till it was released. And that brought the price down to about $41. Okay, so for $41, is this a good price for a storage box? And I kind of have to say no. You know, $41, that's the cost of two rolls of PLA. Um, and it's pretty much the cost of maybe one roll of something a little more exotic. You know, maybe a nice roll of TPU or a Cheetah or something like that. So is it worthwhile? I don't know. Um, I do like, really do like, the actual meter inside. I think that that's really cool. You know what? I picked up some of these on Amazon. And these were two for 10. I'll put a link in the description below for these and pretty much everything here because these are actually really worthwhile. A real bargain, two for, uh, two for 10 bucks. And it's got little magnets on the back. You can sort of stick it to stuff. I honestly think, um, you know, for this price point, I should be able to store three to five rolls of filament, not just one. And for, you know, we're makers, typically. Most of us make stuff. We like to do things with our hands. You know, I just go get a big Tupperware bin, throw a couple packs of Deskin in there, get one of these sensors, throw it in there, and I can store five, ten rolls. Um, probably cost less than $20. So I feel like, you know, that's a much better bang for the buck, and you can store more with it, you know. Um, however, if these were like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, you know, I can definitely see getting, you know, five or ten of them, maybe just to keep sort of my really nice filaments in there, um, polycarbonates and things like that. I'll go ahead and store those in there um, because I do definitely want to keep those really well preserved. 
So I have to say that I feel like Hatchbox, you're sort of on the right track here. I think you came up with a pretty good idea, a great product, but I think the price is a little too high right now. So if this price starts coming down, gets around 20, 25 bucks, I definitely think it's a buy, or if you can get these on sale, maybe they have a Black Friday special or something like that. I feel like it, it definitely be worthwhile having. All right, so I hope you really enjoyed this review. It actually took me about a week to make, um, but it was really a lot of fun. I was trying to do some different things here. I want to talk a little bit about wet filament and the like. Anyways, I really hope you liked it. Do me a favor, like and subscribe down below. You know, it just sort of blows my mind and gets me so excited to produce more content for you. I actually have two or three really cool topics coming up on the next videos, hopefully coming out in like five or ten days. Um, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. And until next video, I'm out.